Hi, welcome to DoctorSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about filiculitis. This is an infection of hair ducts. So um, bacteria get in around the pores around the hair and then set up a, an infection. <clears throat> it actually looks a lot like acne, but there's uh, three main differences uh, which set it apart from acne. The first thing is that in acne, the zits tend to be pretty big above the skin. With uh, filiculitis, the bumps are very, very fine and small. The second thing is that acne also tends to be kind of widely dispersed between bumps. So each of these is a little bump. With filiculitis, it tends to be very fine and close together. So the distribution of the rash is very dense. The third key thing between acne and filiculitis is that with acne, it's just regular skin. With filiculitis, if you look closely, each of the little red bumps has a hair associated with it. So there's a hair sprouting from each one. So folliculitis happens both in males and females. <clears throat> and uh, typical sites that I tend to see it tend to be the upper thighs. And also, especially the face in males. But you can really get it in any part of the body where, where there's hair. <clears throat> and it tends to be symmetrical. So if it's on one side, it's usually on the other side too. And um, where do you get that bacteria from? Uh, there's many different sources. Um, in guys, shaving is an especially common way of doing it, especially if you reuse razors. And it's so common, in fact, we have a special name for that type, which is uh, filiculite barbe. Um, but females can also get it um, from, say, shaving, shaving their legs and reusing the razor. So you accumulate uh, colonies of bacteria in the razor, and with each use, then you re-expose yourself to them. Um, also, sharing razors, that's another way of doing it. And um, an example of that is uh, going for a haircut or ladies going to a hairdresser. If the cutting implements are not sterilized properly uh, between customers, uh, then, then it can hop from person to person. Um, also, using um, reusing sports equipment, like say hockey equipment or gym equipment, um, or uh, equipment like uh, defense equipment or stuff that guards say like uh, balls guards stuff like that um, if they're if they get all sweaty and mucky uh, between uses and they aren't sterilized or or washed between uses then again it becomes a, a good uh, medium or harbor for bacteria and each time you put it on you expose yourself to getting colonized um, Oh, another source is uh, sometimes in summertime, um, for example, swimming in lakes or other natural bodies of water. Uh, you keep reusing the, the same shorts or swimwear and you don't uh, dry it properly between uses. That could then expose you again. You, you're basically creating a nice little petri dish there and sticking it on every day when you go swimming. So those are some of the common causes uh, for getting folliculitis. <clears throat> in terms of uh, getting rid of it, it's usually pretty simple. Um, use an antibiotic so either topically if it's just a small area or uh, if it's a wider uh, dispersion then you can use an oral or tablet antibiotic and that, that goes systemically so it goes everywhere and eradicates the, um, the pathogen <clears throat> uh, typically the response is is excellent with antibiotics but in a few cases I, I find that some people who or recalcitrant or or it keeps recurring in cases like that um, I'd still use the antibiotics to get rid of the initial episode but then I also will often instruct them for several weeks one to make sure that they're washing their their clothes and underwear with um, with the manufacturers suggested uh, volume of detergent um, that they're rinsing it out properly and that they're drying it on high heat that um, helps to eradicate any bacterial load but in addition to that, I'll often also suggest to them to um, bathe for two to four weeks with an antiseptic soap, so like a sulfur-based soap or chlorhexidine. And that basically just eradicates the, um, the bacterial load on the skin, reducing the chance of a recurrent outbreak. Well, in general, like I said, it's usually, it usually looks scary because it, it's so widely dispersed, but it responds very well to, to therapy. Uh, so that's basically folliculitis, what you should know about it if you're suffering with it in a nutshell. Uh, thanks for watching and stay well.